All right, this is part two of section 5.3. This is how to factor trinomials when there is a number in front of the x squared. So when that a value in front of the x squared is actually a number. Um, and I showed you at the end of the last notes that we had no way to do that. So we would say, ah, that's not factorable. But now we don't do that anymore. We try. So the first thing we do is we look at this. And we got 6y squared plus 19y plus 8. We do what is called the decomposition method, which means that we have to split up the middle term. Hmm, how do we do that? First step, I take the first number and the end number, and I multiply them. So I take 6 times 8. 6 times 8 is 48. Next thing I do is I still look at the middle number, and I still want to split that middle term up and see what adds to 19. Okay, So they have to multiply, not to, not to 8 this time, but to 6 times 8, to 48. And they have to add or have a sum of 19. So I think of factors of 48. First of all, I got 6 and 8. No, those don't work. But I have 1 and 48, 2 and 24, 3 and 16, and then I would have 4 and 12, then 6 and 8, and then 8 and back. So I look for ones that actually add up to 19. <clears throat> 148, nope. 224, nope. 3 and 16. If I add both those together, they actually add up to 19. You don't have to write these out every time. You can think of them in your head, but writing them out does help a lot. So I know this is a positive 48 and a positive 19. Everything's positive here, so that means everything stays positive. 3 and 16. Now I'm not done. Because usually what you would do is you'd set up your two set of brackets and be done. But you cannot do that for this. I can't stress that enough. What you do is you split up that middle term into the two numbers I just found. So I have 6y squared plus... 3y, sorry, I should actually put y's on both these, because 48 is a, is a multiplication of 6y squared and 8. That would be 48y squared, and both these have to multiply to that one. So they both have to have y's on them. Plus 16y, and then plus 8. Again, they got to multiply to 6y squared times 8. That should actually be a y squared in there. So that's going to be 48y squared. So each term has to have a y term, and also they have to add to 19y. So it's only it's got to be 6y or 3y and 16y. Next thing I do is I go back to the first part of uh, chapter five, and I have to factor by grouping. Do you remember how we do that? So I take the first two and the last two. I look at the 6 and the 3 and I say, okay, I can take a 3 out, that's a common factor. And the y squared and y, and remember the one with the smallest exponent is the common factor, so I take out a 3y. I divide 6y squared by 3y, I'm left with 2y. I take out a 3y divided by 3y, I'm left with plus 1. Next thing I do is I look at 16 and 8. Common factor there is 8. I divide 16. There's no y because this one doesn't have a y. 16 divided by 8 is 2y because I haven't taken the y out. And 8 divided by 8 is 1. This is important. Both these should be exactly the same, which they are. Then I take out the common factor of 2y plus 1. And I'm left with gone from that one, I'm left with 3y. Gone from that one, I'm left with plus 8, and I'm done. Okay? So factor by grouping. We'll go through another example. So again, I look through. I see a number out in front. It's important that I cannot factor that number out because it's not a common factor. So I have to multiply the 2 times the 9 to get 18. Remember this one times by that one. 2 times the 9 equals 18.
Next thing I do is I need to split the 18 up and it's got to add to that middle term of positive 3. Whoops. That should be a negative 18 because it's 2 times negative 9. And it's got to add to a positive 3. So I think of factors of 18. I have 1 and 18. Whoops. 1 and 18, 2 and 9, 3 and 6, and that's it. <clears throat> so I look at combinations of these, that if I add them, I can get a positive 3. 18 minus 1 is 17, uh, 9 minus 2 is 7. The reason I'm subtracting is because I know one of them has to be negative, because they have to multiply to a negative 18. 6 minus 3, positive 6 minus 3 is a positive 3. So I know that my two factors are going to be a positive 6 and a negative 3. A positive 6 and a negative 3. And keep in mind that that would be an m squared term. So those both have to have an m and an m on them. And those are multiplied to 18 and they add to 3. Good. Excellent. So am I done? No. Nope. I have to split that middle term up into those two I just found. So I have 2m squared plus... 6m minus 3m minus 9. It's also a good idea to pair up your two factors with ones that pair up well. Like the 6 pairs up well with the 2. The 3 pairs up well with the 9. Because when I do my factor by grouping and I look for common factors, it's easier to see what the common factors are. In this case, 2 and 6 is 2. m squared and m is m. I divide those two out, I'm left with just an m plus 3. 6m divided by 2m is 3. I'm going to take out a negative 3. A negative 3. I'm left with a positive m and negative 9 divided by negative 3 is a positive 3. Also, I need the two sets of brackets to be identical because I need to factor out that m plus 3. It's got to be common between both. And I'm left with my 2m minus 3, and I'm done. So factor by grouping, check to make sure both of your brackets are exactly the same, and then pull that out in front, and you're left with 2m because the m plus 3 I've factored out, and the minus 3 because the m plus 3 I've factored out. All right, almost done here. Next one here again, I got a 6 out in front. Uh oh, it's not common between everything. So 6 times 2 is equal to, oops, not 6 times 12. 6 times 2 is equal to 12. And I split that up and it's got to add to 13. So factors of 12, 1 and 12. I don't even need to go any further because I know 1 and 12 multiply to 13. These are all positive. So that means my 1 and my 12 are also positive. Now this time it's got an m and an n, so I know that both these are going to have to have an m, n, m, n. So again, I split that middle term up. I have my 6m squared out in front, plus... Now, which one would I want to pair? Does 12 or 1? That nah, doesn't really matter this time, so let's put the 1 first. 1m, n, plus 12, m, n plus 2n squared. Notice I have that n on the end. That just means that inside my brackets it's going to be on the end. So I factor by grouping again. I look at 6m squared and 1mn. Well, there's no number common, but they do have at least an m because my lowest exponent is an m. So I can take out an m. I'm left with 6m because I factored out an m. And I divide the 1mn one, one by n, m, if, and then have plus n. I factored out the m, I'm left with just an n. Next, I look at 12 and 2. I know that 2 is common, and they also have an n common. So I factor out a 2, that makes that a 6. I factor out an n, and I'm left with just my m. And then I have the 2 is factored out, and n squared divided by n is just n. Also, you should know that both the brackets have to be the same. 
Lastly, I look at the common factor as 6m plus n, and I'm left with my m plus 2n. And I'm done for that one. Whoa, what happened there? I can't even erase that. That's no good. Alright, last one. There's questions in the book that say, for what value of b can this be factored? And you're given one like this. No number in front, so we're back to the original ones where we just have to set up two sets of brackets. And we only have to look at factors of 4. So we start with 4, two numbers that multiply to 4, and add to the middle we don't know. So we're just going to look at factors of 4 this time. They are 1 and 4, and 2 and 2. This is a negative, so I know both of them are going to be negative because they multiply to a positive and add to a negative. If I add these two, negative 1 plus negative 4 is negative 5. If I add these two, negative 2 plus negative 2 is negative 4. So those are my two b values. I know that either one of those b values means that this can be factored because if the b value is a 5, I would know those would be my two factors. If a b value is 4, I would know that 2 and 2 would be my, my factors. So b equals 4 or 5. The negative sign is already there, so I don't have to put it. I just say 4 or 5, the negative sign is already there. And that's it. Now you know how to factor what are called difficult trinomials with the number out in front.